I'm only going to begin to define providence right now. As I said, it's a, it's a huge term, and I'm not going to shortchange it by, by just going through it quickly. So that, that means next week, back for more, Lord willing, uh, about the providence of the Lord. This week, instead of using the Confession uh, of Faith shorter, uh, uh, larger catechism, I'm going to read directly from uh, the Confession of Faith itself. It says that God, the great creator of all things, does uphold, direct, dispose, and govern all creatures, actions, and things, from the greatest even to the least, by his most wise and holy providence. According to his infallible foreknowledge and the free and immutable counsel of his own will, to the praise of the glory of his wisdom, power, justice, goodness, and mercy. And so just to pull out a couple of the key words here, uphold, direct, dispose, govern. Uphold, direct, dispose, govern all things. And he does all of that for his own glory. Now, when you think about the filters we just put in place, we realize that that's not something we should fear. The all-inclusiveness of all of our lives being under the providential care of the Lord. It's actually a good thing. We don't need to chafe against this truth. We don't need to try to uh, get around it or explain it away. No, all things upheld by God, all things directed by God, all things disposed by God, all things governed by God, but a God who is loving. He so loved the world. A God who is for us. A God who sees and knows and cares. This is why providence is such a beautiful thing, and it's why we should want it for our lives. It's why we should want to live under God's providence every minute of every day. It's why you and I can take that leap off of the high dive and following Christ in wherever he providentially determines that we should go personally. He knows the reasons he's made the choices he's made for your life and my life. He knows the reasons for what he's given and why he's given to you and your life and to me and my life. And so you know what we get to do? You and I get to draw really close to the Lord and we get to talk to him about why he's made those choices for us. We get to talk to him about why he's given us what he has given to us or why he's withheld what we believe he might have withheld from us. Then we get to ask him, Lord, inspire my imagination. Lord, what would you have me do? Give me a vision uh, of what you would have me do with the choices you've made for my life and the things that you've given to me. It's like every part of, of our life is the piece of a puzzle. Only it's one of those puzzles that doesn't come with the, a picture on the front of the box. You just have to figure out what it's supposed to look like. Well, what beautiful, what beautiful gospel picture are you going to create with the providential pieces that God has put in your life. I, I pray that you are excited uh, to find out. To, just preparing for this and putting this sermon together has made me really excited to, to, to look at my life and think, Lord, what and why? And I hope that you will draw really close to the Lord. That you'll draw really close to him to, to, to figure this out together with him. That, that the circumstances of your life won't distance you from the Lord, but will draw you closer to him. And I hope you'll be free from attempting to trade your pieces for different pieces, for someone else's pieces. I'm going to close with these beautiful words from the Heidelberg uh, Catechism. What does it benefit us to know that God has created all things and still upholds them by his providence? Answer, we can be patient in adversity, thankful in prosperity, and with a view to the future, we can have a firm confidence in our faithful God and Father that no creature shall separate us from his love. I pray that the Lord blesses you now 
as you spend some time with the Lord, putting together your puzzle pieces, looking for the beauty of the gospel and the beauty of Christ in them. Lord bless you.